All right, so what I'm going to show you in this video is how to modify an original Miss Pac-Man board to the sped up version, speed hack, um, fast mode, uh, there's a few different names for it. I'm going to show you on my Miss Pac-Man, which is a custom cabinet that I built. It's 40% uh, size the, of a normal cabinet, and you can see uh, it has a inlaid plexiglass uh, side there with the, the graphics on it, and I reverse painted uh, the graphics on that, and I hand painted all the graphics on this whole cabinet by hand. Um, I'm going to have another video that's more about uh, this cabinet and how I put it together. You'll see a little bit more of it later when I have to take the board out, but for right now we're just going to talk about the specific modification of this Miss Pac-Man board. So if you look at the Miss Pac-Man board, here it is uh, laid out here, and there is a daughter board up on the top there, and you can see underneath there there's three, uh, there's actually four ROMs there, and 6F is the one that we're interested in. That's uh, the one that we're going to change out to change this to a fast mode Miss Pac-Man. And the only difference between those ROMs is there's just a couple bytes of information that's different, and uh, that sets Miss Pac-Man's speed to fast when we play. So there's a bunch of websites where you can just go and buy these ROMs, and they'll ship them to you, and they work great, and they're affordable. Um, and if you've done that, you can just skip to the end of this tutorial where we actually swap the ROM. But in the next part of the video, we're going to talk about how to create your own EEPROM, starting with a blank chip and a USB chip programmer. Uh, in my case, I'm using a GQ 4x4. It's pretty popular and it's pretty affordable on Amazon. Um, the chips that we're using are 2532As, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get to the programming software in this next part. So I'm using the GQ programming software that comes with the, the burner. You can download the latest version. Um, I'm actually running it in VirtualBox on my Hackintosh, which is a PC running OS X, running a virtual instance of Windows XP. So <laughs> if, uh, if I can do it, you can do it. So uh, what I need to do here is first uh, load the, de the device, which is what chip we're using, and we need to load 2532A. And you'll see it says read only. Um, you need to go ahead and load it anyways, even though it says read only, and you have to make sure that you're using 2532A. So first thing I needed to do is check to make sure my chips were blank. I had a bunch lying around um, and I put them into the USB programmer and found out that none of them were blank. So that is the first step. So now I had to clear these chips and to do that you expose them to UV light in a little um, contained box, uh, also very cheap on Amazon. And so I just went and did that for 30 minutes and that should clear out the anything that's written on those chips. All right, so now we've got our blank chips. We can load them up into our USB programmer. We got that plugged in, and now we can go back and we can load up our device, 2532A. Um, there's another very important piece of information here. You see there's a speed setting on the right-hand column in the program. You need to set this to negative 2, uh, which sets the speed to 5, because that makes sense, right? Uh, these every time I, I tried it it failed unless I set it to negative 2 so you want to make sure you do that now we can load up our ROM file everything looks good that's in the memory buffer and now we can go ahead and write our chip and everything should work great right so here we're writing everything looks good it's not uh, quitting everything's going great this does a double write and it looks like everything is going great and then Verify failed, so it didn't work. This took me a while to figure out what was going on here. It turns out you need to have the auxiliary power supply hooked up to the USB programmer. It works fine, you know, quote, works fine without it, but it's not supplying the proper voltage to properly write those chips unless you have the auxiliary power supply plugged in, which is a 5 volt DC power supply. So I had one lying around, plugged that in, um, and so if you have all these things correct, you have to make sure the speed is on negative 2, uh, make sure you have the auxiliary power supply and make sure you're using 2532A even though it says read only uh, then we can go ahead and write and it should work fine so I did that and I finally got these chips to work fine so it is possible to write 2532A's on this device you just have to keep all those things in mind So the next part of this video is getting my Ms. Pac-Man board out of my cabinet. And you can see it's right inside there. You can see it through that plexiglass window. And it just barely fits in there. Um, if you're not interested in, in, in this part of it, you can just skip to the end of the video where we swap out the 
ROM and you can just take it from there. But I'm going to walk you through kind of what's involved in uh, taking this board out of this uh, mini cabinet, which is a lot. First, I have to take off this little uh, handle here, which has two screws that go into uh, threaded inserts. That's just to create some structural support uh, in that part of the cabinet where the plexiglass comes pretty close to the edge. So there's just a thin piece of, of, of the side of the cabinet there. So it's pretty important to have that there. That comes off. Uh, next, I have to take the wing, wing nuts off of this board that holds the board in place. I took the connector off of the PCB, um, disconnected the speaker wire. I have to reroute some wires that I kind of installed not, not in the best way, so they're kind of in my way here. So I have to take a couple wires off the power supply, remove the last couple wing nuts on the PCB, and then I can take, uh, oh, and before I do any of that, I have to discharge the monitor, so I'm hooking up my cable here. And this is not a self-discharging CRT. It's a 13 inch Wells Gardner, but it's an older model. And so you do have to discharge these. So you'll see here, I'm doing that and you'll see the pop. And that was always super fun. So you have to do that. Now that I have that discharged, I can uh, go ahead and you actually have to remove the neck board from this uh, CRT to get the PCB out. That's how crammed uh, everything is in here. So now I can take that neck board off, uh, slide it to the side, and I have to remove a couple wires here that I was talking about. And then once I do that, I can maneuver the board out of there and it just barely fits in there. Uh, it barely fits in there when it's in there, but fitting it in, maneuvering it in is uh, pretty hard. So. Um, having a little help here from the other end and you have to kind of move it diagonally and see that's why you have to remove the neck board of the CRT and you have to get it at just the right angle we got it stuck a couple times <laughs> but once you get it right at the right angle um, it'll just come out here we're just kind of thinking about it game planning it a little bit you can also see the monitor frame here and so this is a 13 inch Wells Gardner monitor but if I use just a normal monitor frame, uh, the actual, the right side, or the one that's that's facing you right here would actually stick out the back of this um, cabinet, which is how, you know, how cramped this is. So I actually had to create a custom frame there. So you see it comes out and then it bends straight down. Um, otherwise that would stick straight out and the, the chassis would be sticking out the back. And so all the, the chassis had to be uh, moved and all put into this custom frame. But uh, now that we have all that out of the way, um, you can see I uh, successfully get the Miss Pac-Man PCB out and it comes straight out the back. Oh, also I disconnected the um, auxiliary cable to the auxiliary board, which is mounted in the bottom of the cabinet. So I just left that in there and was able to pull the board out. All right, so now that we got the board out, I can get that on the bench. And the first thing we need to do is remove this little daughter board that's right on top of 6F. Uh, or at least the edge kind of goes over 6F and a lot of times these are zip tied in place so we're going to go ahead and just snip this zip tie and that'll let us pull this board straight up. Now that we have that board removed we have uh, full access to 6F and I just have a chip puller here and I'm going to grab it from both sides and just carefully pry this up actually didn't do this great. I'm supporting the board there, but then what happens is uh, one side of the chip popped up, which is a total bummer when that happens. So now I just had to kind of manually pop the other end off and you have to be real careful to not bend any of the pins when you do that. It's really easy if the chip comes off at an angle to, to bend them. So now we have that out of the way and we can go ahead and put the new chip that we just burnt into the socket. Just be careful, get the pins lined up. Um, nothing crazy here. Just get it nice and lined up and then push it gently in and that's all we need to do here. Go ahead and give it a little push once it's in there. Make sure it's seated all the way in there. All the pins are in there. Make sure you weren't, you didn't put it in one pin over and there's two pins hanging out on one side. That's happened sometimes. So make sure everything looks good. And now we can go back to putting the board back together. Obviously we've got to put that daughter board back on. That just presses right back on. And then we're going to have to install the zip tie that uh, held it back in in the first place. Here I'm just carefully putting the zip tie down through the first PCB, the daughter board on top, down through the hole in the bottom PCB, 
and then back up through the other side and tying it off to hold that securely together. Okay, I'll spare you the process of us putting the board back into the cabinet, which was just as difficult as taking it out. But uh, it's the moment of truth. I'm going to go ahead and hook up the main connector to the PCB. We got everything else hooked up, and we can go ahead and see if our modification worked. So we're going to go ahead and turn the power on here. And you can kind of tell by kind of the sounds it makes. You can hear a little blip out of the speaker um, if it's going to work or not and it did boot up fine, which is great news. Then we can just go ahead and enter credit and make sure our modification worked. <coughs>